afternoon, fellow constitutionalists. Um, on today's video, uh, we're going to talk about the Supreme Court ruling that was handed down in the Ohio ballot integrity law case. And that case specifically is um, uh, Huster, Husted, Ohio Secretary of State v. A. Philip Randolph Institute. And I'll put a, uh, a link down in the show notes below and probably put a card up, up top up here uh, with a, um, a link to a video I did about five months ago when uh, Joe Healy, who uh, is running for office in Ohio, I can't remember exactly which office he's running for, and I, I don't really much care, uh, was the, um, how do I want to put this? Um, he was the poster child, I guess, for uh, Common Cause, Let America Vote, uh, because he came back, just real quick here to, to put this in, he, this wasn't a case about him, but, uh, you know, about him specifically, but it was another person that was involved in, in the case that A. Philip Randolph Institute took up uh, on behalf of this gentleman that his um, voter registration was purged from the rolls. So Joe Healy, he came back. He was a Marine. He came back. He's a Democrat, you know, to just to put it uh, a fine edge on things. And. He voted, he voted once and he said he wasn't on the roll. So he didn't, you know, didn't think anything of it, thought it just was a mistake, didn't go to the voter register, didn't call them to try to clarify this. And then like two months later, uh, he, he ran into the same problem. Both times they let him vote on a provisional ballot, okay? And when he checked the second time, he found out that his, he was purged from the voter rolls. And this upset him greatly, which uh, in the grand scheme of things <laughs> to be upset about, uh, getting purged from the voter rolls isn't one of them for me because it's a real easy thing to get back on them nowadays. Matter of fact, when I updated my license, I had to renew my license this year uh, for the next four or six years. Uh, they asked me about my voter registration, and I was making sure that I wasn't registered Republican or Democrat. So they made sure they sent it in. I got a letter saying I'm registered. And I'm not part of either party. I am part of the Constitution Party, by the way. But anyway, so uh, to make a long story short, uh, there was a big to do about nothing with Joe Healy, Let America Vote, Common Cause, and and, and this Randolph, uh, this uh, A. Philip Randolph Institute. Uh, it turned out to be nothing because the ruling that came down in a 5-4 decision today, uh, they ruled that. Ohio did nothing wrong. Matter of fact, Ohio was following the letter of the National Voters' Right Act. It was instituted in 1965 um, uh, and then uh, updated in 1993. And then there was an addendum to that uh, in 2002. Uh, they did something else to it. But at no point, at no point were, were, was there any, any hint of voter suppression in the uh, the voter law, even the purging of the records. Now, uh, Ohio's law is called the Ohio Ballot Integrity Law, and they based it word for word on this section in the um, Voting Rights Act. So let me get over to this real quick here. I have this uh, popped up here for you. Uh, this is the NVRA purging three revision date 06 2002. National Voter Registration Act of 1993, Section 8, Requirements with Respect to Administration of Voter Registration. Now, what, they've been, what, what they were trying to do here is make sure, uh, with this federal law, to make sure that the, the voter rolls, one, were accurate, and two, if, if, if there was people on there that had moved, died, or didn't respond to any correspondence from the, the county registrar's office for voting or the, whoever, you know, however it's set up in your county, then they were purged from the voter roll. And that's what happened to Joe Healy. Uh, that he went, he, uh, I'm telling you what, the, for a Marine, he was doing a lot of whining and crying. But anyway, <laughs> and he went down five months ago. He was on the Supreme Court. I have a link to a video about this uh, in, the, in the note. that will be down in, in the notes below. Uh, about uh, January 10th, has him um, standing in front of the S Supreme Court and just whining and snotting uh, to uh, John Hested, uh, the Ohio, the Ohio State, um, uh, oh, Secretary of State, who's in charge of, of 
making sure that the voter rolls are uh, clean and there's some type of integrity with them. Well, of course, the, the left out there is just going ballistic. They're going apoplectic about this whole thing. And the thing is, <laughs> excuse me, the thing is, Ohio State followed the law. They followed the law as prescribed. Now, let's go over this real quick. I'm not going to read everything. Uh, uh, there's going to be a link in the show notes page to this document. It's a PDF document. Section D, removal of names from voting rolls. And let me just give you a quick synopsis about this. Either they can remove your name because you died, which that upsets Democrats greatly because then they can't uh, flip that vote over for them uh, if it's removed from the voter rolls. Two, if you move. Now, if you move out of that voting district and you're in another, another voting district, you should be registering in that voting district and you should be uh, saving, saving some people some, some time and deregistering or purging yourself from the voter roll. So there's two, death, um, moving, and the third, just not voting. Now, to be fair, in the National Voting Rights Act, it talks about, uh, in this first section here, uh, section 1, a state shall not remove the name of the registrant from the official list of eligible voters in elections for federal office on the ground that the registrant has changed residence unless the registrant, and he goes through a couple things here about, you know, didn't correspond, didn't get back with them or anything like that, okay? Two, a notice is described in this paragraph. Now, they, they mail out a uh, prepaid uh, card that you can mail back. You, you, you write on it whether you moved uh, obviously you're not going to do it if you died <laughs> or, uh, if you haven't voted in a while, you know, you got to say, yeah, I'm still here. I live at this address and send that back in real simple to do. You don't even have to pay your own postage, put it in the mailbox, postman gets it and boom, you're done. For some reason, the Democrats think this is a too high a hurdle to, and progressives, I should say, this is a too high a hurdle to actually jump. So the, 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 the notice is described in this paragraph. It, it, if it is a postage prepaid or pre-addressed return card sent by forwardable mail on which the registrant may state his or her current address together with the notice to the following effect. And so it goes in there. It's, it's rather lengthy. If the registrant did not change his or her residence or change residence but remained in the registrar's uh, jurisdiction, the registrant shall return the card no later than the time provided uh, for mail registration under subsection A, 1B. If the card's not returned, affirmation and confirmation of the registrant's address may be required before the registrant is permitted to vote in the federal election during the period beginning on the date of the notice and ending on the day after the date of the second general election of the federal office that occurs after the date of the notice. And if the registrant does not vote in the election during the, that period, the registrant's name will be removed uh, from the list of eligible voters. And it goes on in, in section B there, if the registrant has changed residence to a place outside the registrant's jurisdiction to which the registrant is required information concerning how the registrant cannot or can continue to, to be eligible to vote. And it, it just mainly send an information where to get in contact with that address. Um, three, a voting register shall uh, correct the official list of eligible voters in the election of the federal office in accordance with the change of residence information obtained in the uh, conformance of this subsection. And it goes on, this thing goes on and on and on, and it talks about, you know, non-voting. It's up to like six years before they can take you off the roll, but they can't take you off the roll uh, just for um, failing to vote. There has to be another process, and this is what the progressives are all up in arms about. They're up in arms, the progressives are up in arms, because they said, well, the failure to vote is actually what causes the process to begin, so therefore you cannot use that. But if you read the law, the law stipulates and says that you have to go through this process, whether, it's, whether they're moving or maybe they moved to a different house in the same jurisdiction or that they just didn't vote like Joe Healy. He was in the service, and, and for whatever reason, I guess he cared enough about his voting rights to really kick up some dust back in January when this went to the Supreme Court, but he didn't check in, he didn't feel his voting rights were that important when he was serving overseas. Now he was in combat, but uh, there's been a lot of veterans that says they, they got their absentee ballot and, and voted. And I'm told it's real easy for, uh, not veterans, but the military folks, 
real easy for them to get their absentee ballot. I mean, the state of Ohio makes it very, very easy for them to do so. They can get it online and mail it in. So evidently, while he was serving, he didn't care about who he voted for. But once he got home and, and found out there was an issue with his voting, didn't check it for two months, went in to vote again, and they said there's still an issue that he wasn't on the voting roll. And then he goes and cries about it. Okay. But those are the requirements. Like I said, I didn't go through everything. That that requirement with the, the moving is almost identical to if you don't vote, except it's with not voting. And they have to send you cards. They have to do it a couple times. And then, you know, if you don't, then after after so long a time goes after, they um, pull you off the voter rolls. Now, the the... Some of the folks in the lamestream media, some of them in the lamestream media are just going apoplectic. Uh, the folks over at Common Dreams, uh, Andrea Germanos, she's a staff writer over there, and they're calling this a setback for voting rights. Supreme Court upholds the Ohio voter purge process. Now, the progressives and the Democrats, they, they call this, this purging the votes, you know, try to make it sound like a bad thing. But what Ohio State is doing is, is the Ohio ballot integrity law. They're trying to keep the integrity of the law, uh, of, the, of the ballots, and of the voter rolls to make sure that if, that if you're eligible to vote, you can vote, and if you're not, if you don't live there, you died, or you're not voting at all, that they purge the rolls. And, and to me, that would be, and I don't mind using the word purge, but I don't use it in a bad way. They go through this process that is laid out in the, in the National Voters' Rights Act, which was last updated in uh, June of 2002. And it's just <laughs> this breaking story and will be updated. Uh, civil rights groups are calling the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling on Monday's upholding Ohio's practice of purging votes from the rolls a setback for voting rights. In a 5-4 to four decision, the court found that the state which drops people from the rolls if they don't vote and they don't respond to notices to confirm their residency does not violate the National Voter Registration Act. Now, again, if they would take the time to read both laws, they would find out a word for word the Ohio law is just like the federal law. And that's why, they, that's why the Supreme Court voted the way they did, except for the liberals on the Supreme Court. A state violates the failure to vote clause only if it removes registrants for no other reason than the failure to vote, Justice uh, Samuel Leto, writing the majority opinion, argued. According to Christine Clark, president and executive director of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights under law, however, the decision was not, not only gets the law wrong, but also sends the wrong message to state officials. The ruling, she argued, ignores a long history of purge programs in our country which have been used to unfairly and disproportionately, now wait for it, folks, target minority voters. There it is. Poof. Let's inject a little bit of race into the law here, folks. That's exactly what they're talking about. And you know what? This is a bad position for these folks to be in. And, and uh, Mother Jones does about the same thing. Supreme Court helps Republicans kill a key voting right law. And they go on down and they talk about it and talk about the Jim Crow South and stuff like that. But the one thing I want you to remember more than anything other than the Ohio's, the Ohio ballot integrity law is identical to the National Voters Right Act as far as the how to purge your voter rolls and, and give them a little bit of integrity, is that it's a bad idea for the... For the progressives, the Social Democrats, the Democrats and Democrat Party, whoever you want to call them, it's a bad idea for them to be holding up the minorities as some type of um, helpless sheep that they can't do anything for themselves. They can't think for themselves. They don't know where to go to get vote to vote. They can't get voter IDs, you know, because because these same folks and Mother jo especially Mother Jones, uh, very progressive. Uh, publication, by the way, vote or uh, having people show their ID to vote is suppressing the vote, suppressing minority votes, especially that the minorities can't do anything for themselves. And I wrote in my little caption here, uh, that's a bad idea because of what President Trump is doing for the economy and minorities in particular. And it has minorities rethinking the plantation mentality that has been fed to them for so long by progressives. And this is the, 
Folks, this is the real reason why uh, that the progressives are losing their minds over this. They really are. I mean, these the, the progressives are, are, are so up in arms about this, it's not even funny. I mean, it's it really isn't funny, folks. <laughs> So there you have it, folks. It's the, uh, the Voting Right Act, uh, the Ohio ballot integrity law, which matches it. Uh, the rule of law was upheld. The Supreme Court uh, judged rightly. They ruled rightly in this case. And the progressives are just not happy about it. <laughs> they just aren't. <laughs> if you like what I do on the show, folks, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so when, you, so when a new video is out, you can uh, get notified. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Leave your comments. Please share the video. And please, 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 if you can help support the show, I have a Patreon account and a PayPal account set up. This has been the Dan Columbus Show. I'm your host, Dan Columbus, your constitutional warrior. Remember, if you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. Have a great rest of the day, and God bless, and we'll see you in the next video.